Today we're going to look at a method for making an animated uh, fluid texture in Maya. Uh, so here's an example of what I'm talking about. So a uh, challenge came up re recently, so normally I do scientific animation, but we're looking at ways to make um, a flowing river or a stream or something like that. And there are different ways you can do something like this in Maya. You can uh, use particles uh, to generate something like this. You can use Bifrost, which is probably the best solution or the most the way you're going to get the most accurate solution. Or you can do something like this, and it really depends on uh, what your needs are. So this is using a Maya 2D fluid as a bump map texture on a simple piece of geometry. So this water that we see here is just a plane. Um, we've got simple geometry, this rock and the banks of the stream or river. And <clears throat> what this allows us to do is to have this fluid react to collision objects. So things like the banks and the rocks. So if we play through here, so it's not perfect, but you can see that the water is swirling around this rock and it's also reacting to the sides of the river bank here. I think it's intersecting a little bit. I don't have it placed quite properly. Um, and the actual speed of the texture and some of the details of the texture I think could be improved. This was just a test. Um, and full disclosure, this is in After Effects. I've ad ad actually ac added some motion blur and frame blending. I've stretched out the animation and I have uh, time warped it to be uh, half as fast as it actually is. I just rendered it out. Uh, the, the the rate of the the flow of the fluid was too high. But anyway, uh, I'll show you how to create something like this, and uh, you can play around with the different settings. So let's get into Maya here. So we'll recreate this, but just take a look at the setup. <clears throat> Let me just hide this thing in the background. So we have a few things in the scene here. We've got our ground plane. So this is just a, a plane that was sculpted to have uh, a stream bed, a rock, uh, just uh, for something that the fluid could interact with. A simple piece of geometry here. You can see that it's just a, a plane with a shader on it, so it's semi-transparent. Let's put this back. <coughs> and a fluid texture, so that's this thing here. If we play the animation, you can see that I'm simulating a fluid here. Now it should be, I've just moved it out of its collision object. It was colliding with the, the plane here. And so now it's going all over the place. We'll hide this as well. So we're just going to start with something like this, and we'll create a plane that fits in this space. So I think I made it 25 by 25. And it doesn't really matter what the divisions are. It depends whether you're going to use this, um, this method to make a displacement map or to make a bump map. I'm just going to use it for a bump map because it looks pretty much the same because I'm not displacing it too much, the kind of waves going on here. Um, so I can just leave it at fairly low resolution, but I want it to intersect with the geometry here so it looks like a flowing river. So the next thing we want to do is, for now, I'm just going to assign a Lambert material to this object. And the reason I'm doing that is because it shows the textures uh, more reliably than the AI standard surface. So there's my polyplane. Let me just delete its history. <clears throat> and if we go into the Lambert, and we'll call this dummy river shader as I will apply this ultimately to a an AI standard surface so in the color channel I'm just going to map 
uh, a 2D texture. So we have the normal things here, file, cloth, bulge, all this stuff that doesn't get used very much, but there's the file texture. But here's a fluid texture 2D. So I'm not going to get too deep into how fluids work in Maya, but just so you know, there's a 2D fluid and a 3D fluid. There's a 3D fluid texture here and a 2D fluid texture. I'm using the 2D one here. So if I create this, you can see it creates, uh, this is a, a fluid container. And I want to make it the same size as my plane. And so this is the bottom down here. And this is the top. So the gravity that's going to be applied inside this container is going to be going this way. So we just have to keep that in mind while I rotate it. So <clears throat> I'm just going to rotate it down. Uh, so rotate it in X, 90. And rotate it in Y. Nope. Okay, so... This where the red line here, this is the bottom of the container. And if I play my animation, nothing happens because by default when this is created, let me just save as my file. Uh, when the container is created, it doesn't actually include an emitter. You have to add that yourself. So we can go to uh, FX fluids, and we can add edit contents. We could just add an emitter here, but instead I'm going to emit from an object, um, just so I have a, a broader shape to emit the fluid from, something that's going to sort of match the shape of the mouth of the river here. So I'll just create a plane, <coughs> excuse me, and I'll just move it over here. I'm going to rotate it into position and scale it up. and just move it over here a bit. And I'll just scale it down so it fits into the fluid shape. Okay, so something like that, and I'll just make sure to freeze my transformations and delete my history. So now if I select the fluid container and this piece of geometry. Go to fluids, add contents, emit from object, and I'll just leave everything at the at the defaults. So if we play the animation now, and this has got to be at real time, your playback speed. So I'll just double check here. So time slider, play every frame, max playback speeds, 24 frames per second. All right, so you can see that a fluid is being emitted into this container. So I'm just looking at this on its own now. So this is emitting fluid and then it's got certain qualities that we're going to change. here. So if we go into the Maya help files under liquid simulation setup, this isn't really liquid sim simulation in the same way that they're doing it here, but you can take a look at some of these settings here and, and this is not a bad place to start. So I'm just going to set this off to the side. But this is where I'm getting some of these initial settings from. And in fact, I, I'm changing them because I wasn't totally happy with the results I was getting when I was doing this, but uh, I think this would reward experimentation. So first of all, <clears throat> I'm going to say keep my voxel square. So I'm back in the fluid texture shape. And so the base resolution, 40 is too low. So um, I think in my final one, I went up to 300 or 500. But for now, I can just go to 100. And so the way this works is that this is a space that is defined by uh, volumetric pixels, so voxels. Um, and the higher the base resolution, the finer the simulation will be uh, in terms of its, the detail that it can achieve. But of course, the more 
uh, resolution you add, the longer it takes to simulate. So they recommend a base resolution of 80 or greater. Um, so there's the, I changed the size here, X and Y, and then the depth, I, I want to keep it thin because it's a 2D container. And then the boundary Y, I want to keep, uh, is this boundary Y? Yes. Yeah, so I want to keep this end open because if I don't, let me just keep it playing through. You can see that the fluid, when it gets to the top here, it reacts to the edge of this boundary. And I don't want that to happen. I want it to just as proceed as if it can exit through there. So I can change the boundary to Y side, I think. Let's just double check. So we'll see what happens. It's a little difficult to see here. But yeah, so it's not reacting to the surface or to the top anymore. So it would continue just to change some of these things. So under dynamic simulation, they recommend turning up the viscosity. And what else do they say? Uh, forward advection turned on. High detail solve for all grids. Mm -hmm. So sub steps and turn up. So we get better quality. I don't know what to put this at, but anyway, and they just say greater than one. So um, so they say higher substeps, 10 to 20 may be required for fast moving, high resolution fluids or fluids that have higher than default gravity. So it says that forward advection keeps the fluid from losing density over time. Okay. So we can enable liquid simulation here. And so I'm just going to go just jump ahead a little bit and turn up the density so we can see it a little bit more. All right. But we can try different things here. So density tension, they say a value of 0 0.1, a non-zero value with increasing values, creating greater surface tension in the fluid. Okay, so tension force 0 0.1 works with density tension to create surface tension. Okay, density pressure. They say to set this to one. Threshold pressure set to one. And they say buoyancy set to negative one. So this doesn't work in our case, because so, if I do this and set this to negative one, you can see it goes in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to leave this as is. OK, so something like this isn't bad place to start. So we can change things with the velocity. We can add turbulence here and so on. So there are lots of different things you can do. I just this, I encourage you to play around with this. But now we want to, uh, now if we look at just the plane that I have here, I'm just going to show this now. You can see that that texture is being piped into the color channel. Right, so it's coming through here, which is good. It is obviously oriented in the wrong direction, so I'm just going to rotate this around. I think it's got to go around 90 degrees or negative 90 in my case in Y, and I'll just freeze its transformations. Okay, so that's pretty good. Oops. Okay, so let me just hide that plane for now. And so we just have our fluid now and our geometry of the stream bed and our rock here. So if we select the fluid container and the rock, so holding down shift and we go to fluids, we can make collide. Now, let's just get in a little closer here to see if we can see what's happening as the fluid comes up. So you can see it's hitting the rock and it is going around it, which is good. 
And then we can do the same thing with the stream bed. So we can go to fluids, make collide. I'm going to open up the options. So the tessellation factor by default is set to 200. And this makes a sort of an invisible dummy object. And they using 200 triangles to make a, a hidden collision object. So we may have to turn this up to get some of the details of the riverbed here. Oops. So we'll try that. So now if we play the animation, you can see it's reacting to the riverbed as well. There are different emitter properties, which we haven't changed yet. So with the emitter selected, we can go in. And one of the things they also recommend under fluid attributes density method instead of add is to change to replace. Right, so we're getting a lot more density here. So that's pretty good. They also uh, recommend increasing the rate to above 100. They say it turned the fluid to drop uh, fluid drop off to zero. Okay. Oh, fluid drop off here. Zero. So fluid drop off. They have no explanation for this. I'm accepting it on faith alone. Right. So this is pretty good. They say turn on motion streak and jitter off, which I didn't do last time, actually. Uh, I think my density is maybe too high. Uh, so I'm just going to go back into the texture. Uh, and I turned it up so it was easier to see, but if we go into the content details under density, we can turn this down a bit so we can see a little more of the subtlety here. So we see a bit more of the fading from white to gray. So you can keep playing around with these different things. There's turbulence in the emitter. There's also turbulence in the... Um, actual fluid shape, you can change the density amount, you can change all of these things. But you might want to let it play through a little bit and then set its initial state. So let's say we like the way that it looks here, this kind of rapidly flowing river. We could go in and go to fluids, or sorry, to fields and solvers, initial state, and not set for selected here, but under fluid set initial state here. And I'm going to do that in a minute. Uh, but first, you can see that the this is not a, a great representation here, um, but we might want to turn up the resolution of this. So if we go back up to the top here of the fluid shape, the base resolution is 300. If I go up to something like 400 and go back, now you'll see it's going to take longer to solve. But we can see here is it interacting with the geometry and we'll see it interacting with our rock in the stream here. Still a bit jagged here. I haven't totally figured out how to solve these things. I'm not sure if this is to do with the resolution of the collision object or if it's the resolution of the voxels. Anyway, I'm not 100% positive. Okay, I actually went back to my original one since I played this one out already, and it's kind of got interesting settings here. Um, now, if we play this out for a little while, if we select the fluid shape and then go to field solvers, initial state, fluid set for initial state here, just leave these at the default set initial state. And then on frame one, this is what it will be like, and it will proceed from there. So the next thing to do is to use this in our shader, right? So um, if we go into the hyper shade. OK, so I'll take that original plane, so the geometry of the water. And I'm going to assign a new material. And I'll add an AI standard surface. 
So what we're seeing on top here is actually our fluid material, our actual fluid. Um, so I don't want to move it out of the way. I'm just going to hide it for now. Whoops, wrong thing. And then if we go back into the hypershade, and that texture we created earlier is the fluid texture. So let's drag this in here. And before I connected it to the color of my Lambert, and I can attach to the color of my um, AI standard surface. If I play the animation, it doesn't always update. Um, it's better usually with the Lambert rather than the AI standard. But what we can do instead of hooking up to the color is to hook it up to the bump. So to hook up something to bump in AI standard is that we just select it over here, go to geometry, and middle mouse drag the fluid texture onto bump mapping and it will add, that's middle mouse dragging, we'll add the pump 2D node in between, I can set it to a lower value, and let me just get my background light out again, and we'll just try a little render, let's see if this is working. Okay, so we can see that um, it is working here, that texture is coming through into the bump channel. So just a couple things to look at how you can make some changes to this. If we go back to the original fluid texture, um, <clears throat> and if we go down into shading, You'll see that the color is defined by whatever the color input is here, and the default is density. And there's a ramp that is going from, to, it starts, I think, uh, going from black to white. Um, and if we, let me turn on the Arnold renderer here, if I can. Right, so if we go from um, the default setting, which is black to white, we get sort of a more aggressive bump. Uh, but we can change these colors. I don't have them either as white or black here. If I change this one back to white, you see it's stronger. And maybe this is what you want. Uh, but if we want to soften this a little bit, we can change these colors to somewhere in between. Right, so something like this. And then the color input, it should be density by default, but it can be changed to something else if you wanted to use that. And then the input bias, uh, what I've been trying to look for is a way to find to soften the edges between the sort of clamped whites and blacks here. And I found that pushing the uh, input bias over towards the right here, we're getting some better results. It's still sort of plateauing in these regions here. And so I'm not really 100% sure how to fix this. I also changed the interpolation from the default linear to smooth. Or you can try spline. to get something like this. Now we're still free uh, to make changes to the overall uh, settings in the fluid and these will all be felt here in this texture. And then if we go back into the AI standard surface, we can make any changes we want to this. So if I go to one of the presets, I can go to like deep water. So it's a little bit hard to see here. But now we've got a water texture and the bump is on the surface here. I'm just going to change a couple more settings. And the AI standard surface. So 
the deep water that has transmission and it's got a color and then a depth and a scatter color. So the depth is much too deep for my scene. So if I go down to something like one, then we'll start to see the scatter color uh, farther away from the surface based on the angled camera. So we're getting kind of nice ripple surface here. I've got an HDR image and so we get a nice detailed surface and you can see it's not really perfect. Uh, I think this is the resolution of the voxels. You can see some of these uh, settings or some of the voxel settings are making these sort of cube like structures in here. Um, and so this could probably be changed and improved with different settings for the voxel resolution. I'm not <laughs> really sure. Uh, I have to experiment with that. But what we are getting, and this will probably crash if I try to render this, but save the scene. But what you should see when we animate this is the flowing fluid being applied to the bump map of this shader and because the fluid is reacting to the objects in the same position as that this piece of geometry it appears to flow over them so if we just pop back oh so this is a nicer <laughs> material right so we get this nice sort of effect where it seems the water seems to be reacting to the surface so it's not perfect obviously uh, but uh this is a good starting point if you're interested in trying something like this to make an interesting scene with a more complex shader than just simply pushing a fractal along here or something like that. So I hope you find this helpful and if anybody has any suggestions on how to prove this to improve this technique I'd appreciate it. Thanks very much.